welcome to Success Redefined with Dr. Tony Warner. I'm Dr. Tony, mama five, psychotherapist, author, and mentor. Here, you're going to find insightful discussions spanning science, psychology, and soul as the personal and professional meet, and we explore the intersection of what really matters. So success can be redefined with connection, healing, and fulfillment in mind. In today's conversation, I am joined by Sarah Dawkins, who's a former registered nurse turned entrepreneur. And we're going to talk about challenges of losing passion for our professional work, especially in the healthcare system, the medical scene, um, the healthcare provider service scene because of the political red tape or because the people work becomes the paperwork and so on and so forth. And the challenges that come with that, as well as ways that that can actually wind up helping us these unexpected ways because it can wind up opening some doors that perhaps we weren't looking for or we weren't open to before. And one of those doors for both Sarah and I was entrepreneurship. And there's deeper self-healing that can also come with some of those doors too. So we talk a bit about that self-development journey. We talk about some of the experience of what it's like trying to build a business and actually feel successful along the way, whether you're getting the tangible results or not. And Sarah is a great person to have on the show for this episode because she was a registered nurse for 20 years. She was in the healthcare system and thought she always would be, but that changed. She experienced a lot of mental health challenges and other challenges that the medical world was not able to support her with. And so she wound up going a different direction and that affected ultimately where her career led her. And so now she aims to support clients that she works with in finding and healing the root cause of their health problems and has become a multi-award winning entrepreneur. Let's go ahead and hop in. Hello, welcome, Sarah. I'm glad that you are here joining us today. Thank you for, for letting me join you. It's a pleasure to be here. I am looking forward to this conversation together today. I think this is going to be one that maybe gives us some questions that are good for us to ask ourselves. We're going to dive into this conversation today around redefining success with high achievement as a woman, as a wife, as a person of faith. But we're going to do it from this entrepreneurial lens. So this is kind of a special episode where we are really wanting to support our, our entrepreneurial audience because Entrepreneurship is something that we know has grown um, throughout COVID and continues to be an area where people are getting more and more curious about. And so you and I are also entrepreneurs. And this this conversation is going to hold a special place in our heart because I know we both have had our own journeys for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. You ready to do it? I am. Let's dive in. Let's dive in. Okay. So if I look back on on my entrepreneurial journey, it's interesting because so I have two businesses. I have my private practice as a psychotherapist. And then I have my second, I'm using air quotes, business because it's it's evolved over the years. And we would probably be able to have 10 episodes or so about just the evolution, right? That happens with entrepreneurship. Um, but my experiences uh, were a little bit different. There were definitely overlaps, but they were a little bit different between the two um, of developing my private practice as an entrepreneur. And then as developing what first started out as a coaching business um, as an entrepreneur, but has really just evolved into uh, an avenue with which I share my mission and my vision with the world that allows me to contribute and connect in a meaningful way. So my entrepreneurship journey did not start out with me making millions. It did not start out with me feeling like I was doing all the things and really successful. Like it just did not start out that way. Now, was I doing a lot to get it up off the ground? Yes, I was. But the results that I would ex that I, I expected at the time that measured success that were saying I was being successful were very very different than what I had expected, and I am curious if that is similar for you. If if you look back on how 
your entrepreneurial journey first started out and what you thought it was supposed to be like or look like, right, for you to be successful, if that went the way that you thought it was going to or not? I think I left my job as a nurse and literally took a leap of faith to become an entrepreneur and set up my own business because my husband had suggested it. Um, and I was becoming a bit disillusioned with the work that I was doing because I'd healed myself. So I was having conflicts in that medical model versus what I'd done for myself. So when he said, um, set up your own business, I had no preconceived idea about what to expect because I'd never, ever had a business myself. So I went to classes at the university where I did all my studying throughout my nurse training and then the, the qualifications afterwards to learn how to be an entrepreneur and what it all involved and entailed. And I went to weekly classes. Um, and again, still no preconceived idea because at the time, I'm like, well, so what's my business going to be about? What's the focus? Because I'm still a nurse. Um, I kept my registration and I was doing some writing for journals, nursing journals. I was doing a little bit of agency nursing, but not full time because I didn't want to be in a hospital. Mm. And when I put my profile on LinkedIn, you know, this is, these are my skills as a registered nurse. Um, and I'd done some training to do some teaching. Three different companies approached me. Um, to do work for them. One was for DNA testing, to go to clients' houses and take samples. One was for medical legal work. And another was to be a nurse trainer and go all over the UK, teaching different healthcare establishments and hospitals their mandatory training. So I still didn't have a real clear focus of what my business was other than I was a nurse. But I was doing all these different jobs. Um, and, and I defined myself as successful at the time because three companies had come to me and without an interview, just based on my profile, had literally offered me jobs. I'm like, that has got to be the meaning of success, that people want the skills that I have and are willing to pay me without even seeing me. Wow. It's a very different. Yeah, is it, it? Did that change then for you? I, well, I guess the first question would be: What did you say to them? Did you say yes, or did you say no, or what? Where, where Where did you take it from there? Well, I, I asked them for more information about what their jobs entailed, um, and they would be subcontracting my company, uh, me through my company, um, and and I like idea because it was totally different in the main from what I've been doing so I had to learn new skills but the fact that they were confident in my abilities without even seeing me I felt I must have something that is exciting them so for me from that off I felt successful because those companies had come to me and I hadn't needed to go out. And I'd literally taken that leap of faith into nothingness, not knowing anything about business or what I was going to do. When I set my bank account up, they said, well, what's your business about? Well, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. They're like, um, no, I don't think you can have a bank account because, you know, you just... So I had to make an appointment, go back another day and say, actually, I've changed my mind. I'm just going to go down this one route. But I hadn't because I was, I was interested in doing all of this. But the only way to get a business bank account at that time was to say, here's my business plan. This is my focus. Mm. Um, I started to make these elaborations about where I was going with my business. And that, and that really didn't sit well with me. But it was the only way I was going to get a business bank account and keep my fingers in all these pies with the work that I was enjoying doing. Did you... When you went out into to the entrepreneurial space, you had support, it sounds like. You know, you said that your your partner was very supportive of you. In fact, it was his idea. Yeah. You had taken classes to kind of prep yourself for that. And it doesn't sound to me, correct me if I'm wrong, that you entered into the entrepreneurial space from a place of like desperation or 
needing maybe to prove a certain thing or like it didn't it didn't sound like at, from what you're describing here that there was an energy of of fear and lack that was fueling this at the time there was some fear there because it's taken a leap of faith into a total unknown but I've come from a, a quite a dark place actually I was um, very depressed and I'd had suicidal thoughts and I was I was healing and this was my leap of faith out of it. So part of me was pleased to be taking that leap of faith. And the other part of me is like, I know nothing about being an entrepreneur. You know, what on earth am I going to do? So I have that fear and doubt about what being an entrepreneur meant and, and what I was actually going to do until these companies came to me sort of a few weeks or maybe a month or so down the line. But I didn't have to wait long. But that interim period, like, what am I doing? Yes, my husband was supporting me and I was doing the classes. But inside me, I'm like, who am I? <laughs> the uncertainty. Yes, because I always saw myself as Sarah the nurse until I retire and then Sarah the retired nurse. And now I jumped out, but I was still, I still needed my registration. So I still identified as a nurse. But I was doing different roles. Um, so in my head, I suppose I kept myself in that, in that box there with a nurse, even though I was doing all these different jobs. I couldn't do them without my nurse registration. Wow. So your entrepreneurial journey started before you even made the decision to become an entrepreneur. It sounds like, like the, the pieces started connecting in themselves as you made the, the decision of probably many multiple decisions to try to heal yourself in a different way than the conventional medical way. Yeah. And it, it sounds like somehow that's connected to your entry into entrepreneurship. Would you say yeah. that there's a question there? Yes, I would. And I, I, you know, that the depression that I went through um, on and off for about three years with suicidal thoughts I was in a really deep, dark place. And I, looking back, I, I had to go through that to make the radical changes to step out of where I was at because of, I, I believed that I would be this nurse until I retired. But with more and more bureaucracy and more and more paperwork needed filling in and less and less being with the patient and about helping the patient, I really felt this is... You know, this is what I signed up to. I wanted to help these vulnerable people in their times of need. And, and I'm just shuffling papers about and dealing with staff and management. So I, in my mind, I've made the decision that it wasn't right. And I've got conflicted um, because I was healing myself as well. But I wasn't sure what the next step forward was. And it was that leap of faith built by my husband, um, taking that, I felt freedom in a way because I was leaving things that was just sapping my soul, jumping into something that was igniting my soul, but really not knowing what that was. Mm. This reminds me of so many Things that I had experienced, but also I've seen other therapists because I'm I'm a I'm a therapist. My primary private practice is in psychotherapy. Have had the experience of working in other organizations and agencies where you're passionate when you come into the field and you're wanting to do people work, but then it turns into paper work and your passion fades and you become disconnected or unclear or hazy about the purpose of it all in the first place. And that can lead to a bunch of different things for each of us, right? Burnout, depression, anxiety, a, a, a mirage of things. And I can resonate with some of what you shared. I've, I've experienced my own mental health challenges as well, but it's a common experience when that passion fades and the purpose gets confusing and the people work turns to paperwork but for you, it was a part of the journey that led to the entrepreneurial piece becoming so meaningful, so meaningful, not just to make money. And there's nothing wrong with making money at all. Yeah. 
But there's something different about going into entrepreneurship with a deeper connection to the meaning about why you're doing that. Did, did you feel that at the time that there was like a deeper connection, even though you were still putting the pieces together and there was uncertainty? Did you feel that at the time? Yes, because I was working for myself. So I got to choose the work that I wanted. And also when I wanted to work, you know, I could choose to say, no, I want this week off or no, I don't want to, you know, that work that day. Um, and the work was I had to learn new skills because I've never done any of this work before. So the, the learning new skills as well, um, I really enjoyed. And then uh, doing different things, you know, every month I would do a, an array of different tasks in different areas with different people using different skills. And that really lit me up all that my fingers in different pies all the time. Um, and, and as you say, as you know, it was, it was nothing wrong with, with choosing your work and earning the money. And for me, it, yes, the money was good. It, well, it certainly wasn't millions, uh, five figure, six figure, whatever, but it was, it was meaningful work. I was, I was helping people in a way to help themselves. Um, which is what I feel is the way that health should be going helping people to help themselves and becoming more responsible for themselves. And that is what really lights up my soul. Mm. I want to tie, you said it's meaningful work. I want to tie that into a conversation around how, you know, folks like you and I who have, you know, been, been described or labeled as, as high achievers, uh, I know that because of the interactions you and I had as, as I was vetting you through the podcast process. And um, and so I know that you you resonate with that, that high achievement, right? And, and I do as well. There can be this sense of like self-sacrifice in meaningful sometimes that I see. For example, uh, it, at, with nurses or therapists, they're, they maybe keep doing the work because they're like, oh, but this is, it's supposed to be meaningful work. It's supposed, it's supposed to feel like meaningful work. So I should keep doing it because these jobs are needed and there's people that need what I do. And then they wind up almost martyring themselves or sacrificing or neglecting or minimizing themselves by staying in environments where they are drained or by staying in a lifestyle, right? That's not actually fueling them. But the kind of meaningful work that you just described in your entrepreneurial journey has a whole different flavor of meaningful to it. Can yeah. you speak to that? Does that connect with you at all? Yes, because I was doing the work for me through my business and, and as I said, it was my choice to do that work and learn those new skills. And for me, the meaning was to help people, to help themselves. And that is, is that really, really nourishes my soul, helping people to help themselves. So if I was, you know, when I was teaching and helping people to, to manually handle, to, to help themselves to not injure themselves, and then I was helping people through child protection to understand, to, to safeguard the children. And then I was helping um, people with the DNA. You know, I'd, I'd meet addicts and I'd have to take hair samples. And they're like, I haven't touched a drop of, of drink. I'm like, that's so good. You know, I'm really proud of you. Keep on this journey. I'm, I'm sorry I've got to do this, but it's, you know, it's a two-way process. It will It will show you how good you are the progress you're making on your own journey to stop in the drink, to improve in your lifestyle. Um, and the um, medical legal work was about auditing um, patient notes to find anomalies um, and pick out those details. And, and again, it was to help people because you know, we all make mistakes. Um, and when people are left um, with life-changing injuries they want some comeback from somewhere and and it's you know it's okay to say 
you hurt me. I need you to hold your hand up and be responsible for that. So in all of the jobs that I was doing, I was helping people to, to, to empower themselves and take, but to take responsibility for themselves and their actions as well. So it really was lots of different work, but ultimately I was helping the people to help themselves in, in a variety of arenas. Wow. It sounds like you felt a lot of momentum earlier on in your entrepreneurial journey. Did that momentum sustain itself or did you ever have any challenges with like doubts or dips as you continue to grow your business? Um, it was challenging in the way that um, I have to work to earn the money. Um, and there's always the potential somebody could cancel a contract and then, I'm, you know, a, a, a job down. So there was those kind of regular challenges that all entrepreneurs can face because nothing is certain. Um, but I wouldn't say I was really challenged. Maybe the distance I had to go sometimes to do the um, teaching training. You know, I travelled all over the UK and stayed in hotels. So I was away from from home from my husband and our dogs because the kids had left home by then. Um, so there was those kind of challenges, travelling all over the UK and having to stay in hotels, which wasn't wonderful. But it, mm. it was all part of the job. Mm. Did you enjoy any parts within the challenge that you experienced? I enjoyed it all. <laughs> I, I, I lived for my work because I just saw it. I was helping people on so many different levels, um, not just in vulnerable positions. Um, and as long as I'm helping people to help themselves, I just lo I love what I do. And so besides working for yourself, what feels like it's been the biggest difference maker for you? I, I, I just hear a completely different energy as you talk to me about, you know, this, the business that you've been building and your entrepreneurial journey, completely different energy than when you were sharing about how you were in the nursing field and you were feeling a disconnect and you had a lot of things um, going on within yourself as well. What is the biggest difference maker for you, besides of the obvious that you work for yourself? Like what what's helped that internal shift that you're feeling move for you the most? Do you think? I think it was when somebody questioned me back in 2005 about. I would, let me let me give you a bit of a backstory. I was raised by a nurse. Um, in the medical model and always wanted to be a nurse because I really love the idea of helping people in their vulnerable times. So for 41 years, I lived in that medical model that when you're sick, you go to the doctors, you get medications, a diagnosis, you take the pills and you heal. And, and that was my belief uh, for 41 years. Somebody questioned me back in 2005 about pharmaceuticals at home. Um, so I'm like, well, why would she do that? So I started researching, found the power of our body and the power of our mind and what we can do to help ourselves. So I started my own healing journey outside of pharmaceuticals, which I'd normally gone to. And I started healing and I healed a whole range of conditions, including three autoimmune, the depression with the suicidal thoughts and that started my disconnect from the medical model. And I saw, although I was helping people in the hospital, I'm mean, doing more and more paperwork, um, I was helping them, but I wasn't really. I was just supporting them to have, I was a critical care nurse, so I was having supporting them to have bits cut out or bits put in and medications. And I'm thinking to myself, We're not, I'm not really helping these people. I'm just helping them to not have symptoms by having an operation or having medication. Whereas the work I'd done on myself, realizing I'd healed myself by addressing the root cause of my health problems, not just how can I make the symptoms go away. And that was the real change in me. It was like, yeah. I, I want to help people to support themselves to heal from the root cause of their health problems. 
um, not just work in the hospital and give a pill to stop that symptom or cut that bit out so it's no longer troublesome. So that was that changed my energy when I saw how powerful our bodies are. And it was at, at that point um, I actually trained as a coach and I closed my very first business that I'd won awards in and opened up a coaching business. And that now really lights me up because I am absolutely helping people to find the root cause of their health symptoms and diagnoses and heal those themselves. So I've stepped away from my very first business, set up a second business just over a year ago now. And that that is where my passion is. But it's taken me, I've had to go through the process. I'm still in that caring field and environment, but I'm no longer a nurse. I surrendered my license two years ago. Um, and actually, after two year battle with my mind, because, you know, I'm, even though I'm not really working as a nurse, I'm doing all this other work, I'm still a nurse. But I finally um, decided to step away from nursing. Um, because I couldn't uphold what I needed to to stay on a register. It no longer aligned with me. And now my passion is truly helping people to help themselves to heal from the root cause of their health problems. It sounds like <clears throat> even though you were kind of going through the motions of helping people before, the, there was this disconnect within yourself of I, maybe I'm questioning if this is actually doing the deep healing that I, I want to be a part of doing. And so the work that you've evolved into has, it's just been more integrated with what you actually believe, with what you know to be true within yourself because of your, your own experiences. And so there's this deeper it sounds like there's a deeper a deeper like integration with your own beliefs with the work that you're doing now versus the work that you were doing before is that a yes yes i would say so because you know when i went in to train to be a nurse in those first few years working as a nurse i was loving my job loving what i was doing because that you know that i felt that's what i was born to do but then as, as somebody questioned me and I started looking and researching and then my own healing, I started to see and have that disconnect between my role as a nurse within that medical model and my own healing and knowledge that I'd grown through my own healing. So that's when I started to become more disillusioned with my role as a nurse and, and the bureaucracy was increasing and it was more paperwork and less patient work. Um, mm -hmm. So the whole, it was like, it was like a perfect storm almost. And it, and it ended with me in that deep, dark, suicidal place. Um, and I feel that was, that was, that had to happen to help me sever the relationship with the hospital and, and first start up my own business to help people in a different way. Um, because I still wanted to help people to help themselves. But it wasn't until I'd done a lot more of my own healing, I realized that actually I needed to be a coach to help people to help themselves. So it, it, it was a progression. And, and I learned through doing my own healing. But I wouldn't have ever done that unless that nurse I was working with back in 2005 just questioned me. Um, and that just literally set me off on a, on a whole different trajectory, led me down into a dark place for three years. And then I've come out a totally different person. It's, you know, it's interesting because it's your experience in your work was affected by how much it aligned with your beliefs, right? So like in the beginning of your nursing career, you really believed in what you were doing and you believed that's where you needed to be. And so you were really enjoying that. And then slowly what you were believing was being questioned, right? And so slowly over time that, that kind of disintegrated. But the work that you're doing now really aligns with what you believe because of your life experience. And so it's, it's fueling you and filling you up and, and really integrating that passion within you again. And I think that that's something 
that is good for us to be aware of, but can also maybe be maybe be challenging for for folks that are wanting to go off on the entrepreneurial journey, maybe because they just don't like where they're at. <laughs> like I just I just don't like where I'm at, so I might as well just go work for for myself. Do you have any words that you would want to share with those folks that are like, I just don't like where I'm at, so I'm going to go try to venture this entrepreneurial thing? Yeah, just just take a leap of faith. You know, I think especially it's easier if you've got a supportive partner and an income, obviously, because when I let, took that leap of faith, that was it. My income ended. Um, and I was without income for, um, I think about two months, um, until things started happening. But follow your passion. You're, you will be successful as an entrepreneur if you do things that nourish your soul, not things, because people can often chase money. If I, I, if I'm an entrepreneur, I can make all this money. Actually, I looked at it as, I can be an entrepreneur and, and do what my heart is telling me to do or do what my soul needs. So do more of what you like and the universe will just open up and things will just find the way to you. But be open-minded as well because, you know, like I, I first set out as a, a nurse entrepreneur, so I was still open-minded what can I use my nursing knowledge for and then I realized I had to deregister as a nurse and change my path again because I understood more of what it was that was really um, filling my heart full. And so it's just, it's an ever evolving process. By all means, have an idea, follow your heart, but be open minded because there are so many opportunities out there. And if you just open your mind and be that open book, they will find you. But if you close your mind off and think, this is all I'm going to do, like the bank wanted me to say to set up my business, this is all I'm going to do. You close your mind off to everything on the outside of that. So it is about being open-minded, but absolutely follow your dreams, do what you feel you, you are here to do, but be willing to make changes and, and adjust your course as well because things will happen and can knock you off course. But actually, they can open far more doors further down the line. If you can remain open-minded, you'll see them. So if someone says, "I love, you said something that struck me. I'm going to try to remember what you said. <clears throat> you can go into it chasing money where you, where you looked at it differently. You went into it thinking I can do what really lights me up in, yeah. in, in a nutshell. I didn't get the words exactly right, but something like that. Right. So for someone that's like, yeah, that's all great. Right. But I just quit my job or I'm about to quit my job and I have to make money in X amount of time. And so they're, their, their brain is getting clouded with the fear of, I don't have that luxury of just waiting to see what works out or just, you know, kind of being more open about it. Like I have to figure it out, which I think there are, you know, there is a good amount of entrepreneurs that enter that way. I know me for myself, when I opened my private practice, I, I didn't feel that way because I was still doing my, my day job as well, providing therapy in my salaried position. Um, but when I officially left the day job so that I could do two businesses, then I started to feel some of that pressure of, I got into comparisonitis, I'll be honest. I'll be like, well, if other people can make a lot of money doing this, like, you know, I have the degrees, I have the experience, I have the passion, I have the da 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 why can't I? And it didn't, what they said worked for them did not work for me. And it would become frustrating. And I'm like, why is this not working, right? And so for folks that are in this place of, okay, I feel like I don't have that luxury of being open-minded, or I don't have that partner who's as supportive as yours. What, what might you 
share with them around how to navigate that experience? Maybe write down on a piece of paper all the skills and knowledge bases that you've got from your current job from any, any other study you've done, from life skills that you've learned, look at all of that, reach out to friends and family, ask them what they think you're good at, because they might highlight something that you've never even thought about that might just spark an idea. Um, even go to job centers and look at what kind of jobs are available, look online what kind of jobs are available, um, this, we can always earn money, you know. We can whether it's it's working jobs that we really don't like as a stopgap or fill in, you know, because it's about we we obviously need money to live, so we've got to earn money unless we've got a supportive partner. But the, there's another part of that as well, and and something we did was downsize because when you've got a big house and huge bills and mortgages and you know, it's about how can I simplify my life so that I don't need to earn these mega bucks to live this rich and lavish life. Let's start simple, you know, downsize, um, sell off some things, make some space. Um, you can earn money from selling things. There's always somebody somewhere will buy something which will bring in money. Um, Look at your bills. How much do you really need to live on? And really drill down what your basic needs are and how much money you can get by on. And sometimes we have to, when, we, when we're leaving a toxic workplace um, to set up on our own, we have to take a side step and maybe suffer a little bit of hardship to get us to where we want to go and see it as a stepping stone. You know, life, wouldn't it be great if life runs smoothly? But, you know, if you look at a flat line, that's not how we are. We, we Life is full of ups and downs. But, and the same as an ECG or EKG, as you say in America, you know, it's it's full of ups and downs. And when it's flatlining, it's not good. So take the, the lows with the highs and, and see it. Don't see it as a negative. Um, it's, yes, we all need money, but we've, only got so much time on this planet. So do more of what really fills your heart, nourishes your soul. And if you've got to take a side step and live through a bit of hardship for a short time, then do it if it's going to help you to get to where you need to be. Um, assess how much you need to live on and live within your means because it's easy to spend money. We can. There's so much to spend money on. But really cut back and narrow it down and just put your heart and soul into your business, into what you want to do and where you want to go. And those avenues will open up for you. But you have to really have faith and really believe in yourself. And that was one thing, although I jumped out of a job into nothing, I really believed that something would happen. And it did. But you have to have that faith in yourself, in your own abilities, and that belief that that where you, what you're planning and where you're going is really what you want to do, and it will just open up for you. Mm, having a, having that faith and belief in yourself also it's helpful, of course, to have someone that is supportive as well. Um, but to be open to allowing the ebbs and flows of life. I think that's a, a reminder that we all benefit from. I have to remind myself of that very often, that life is ebbing and flowing. And that's actually a really, really good thing. Uh, it's not a bad thing at all. Like you said, to flat, like flatlining is not a good thing, right? So I, I want, I, I, I try to constantly check in on myself, like, yes, maybe, this particular time period is more challenging or, or there's more stressors or maybe this is like so much more blissful and I would like it to last longer or whatever the case is, but to really allow those ebbs and flows. Yeah. And I think 
like uh, that applies to all of us. But if we talk specifically about entrepreneurship, when that pressure is on ourselves, that we have to get it right, we have to get it done, especially if we're a high achiever and overachiever, we can put a lot on ourselves and we make our like definition of success super rigid. So it's if I'm not making this amount of money or if I can't do what they could do even better or if I, you know, all of these things, it feels like we are failing and where we shut ourselves off to the ebb and the flow of things. But when I heard you just, you just said several uh, different kind of practical things someone could try or look into that were temporary, not forever, but just yeah. temporarily, what I was hearing in the background of that was like, allow the ebb and flow. It's not oh, I'm a successful entrepreneur because I said I'm going to do this thing and boom, now I'm making millions of dollars overnight, right? Like <laughs> we see that blasted on social media sometimes, yes. yeah. but that is not the definition of success that that I would offer here. I, I would say that, you know, we tend to feel more successful if we're open to that ebb and that flow. The There's ups and downs and peaks and valleys and a bunch of in between too. Yes, yes, there is. Um, and how do you define success? Because for some, it is those millions of, of pounds or dollars or whatever. For me, success is I'm doing what I love. I'm putting the hours in that I want to put in. I don't feel pressured to put in 60 or 80 hours a week. Um, I have a roof over my head. I am living debt free doing what I want, when I want, with enough money to pay the bills, but doing work that really nourishes my soul. And to me, that's what success is. Um, you know, I've done the high achiever. I've done the award-winning entrepreneur. Yes, it's there's a lot of pressure there. But now in a slightly different role, in a slightly different business, um, success is different. And, and I'm older. Mm. You beat me to the punch because my my closing question to you is going to be, you know, what is your newly redefined definition of success? Oh. You so eloquently shared what yours is. And I think that that's beautiful. I also think, you know, it that can apply to all of us and it can look differently yeah. for all of us as well. Yes, it can. I am so glad we got to have this conversation today. I think that it's an important one. Of course, I think all of the conversations that we have on the podcast are important ones, but I like that you shared here, Sarah, an entrepreneurial journey that's still about allowing things to ebb and flow, still about evolution, right? You didn't end where you started. It's your, you, you start somewhere and you learn and you grow and then you start someplace else and you learn and you grow. And I think that's a really important conversation, but also my entrepreneurial beginning for my second business was much more tumultuous. And so I like hearing the different um, experiences and the different seasons of life that they happen in and the different ways that they can make an imprint on the path that we choose. So I so appreciate that that you came and you shared and you were willing to be so open with us. Thank you so much. My pleasure. For folks that are really wanting to stay connected with you, or maybe they have questions or they want to follow your work, where would be a really good place for them to find you? Um, my website will be the best place because everything is on there, and that's www.sarah.com. Dawkins.com. Sarah with an H and Dawkins, D-A-W-K-I-N-S. Awesome. And then I see that you have a book next to you. Do you want to share a little bit about your book? Thank you. Um, I wrote my book, Heal Yourself, about my own healing journey and reached out on social media to ask other people to sh if they wanted to share theirs as well to, to show people that we can heal ourselves 74 people came back, and uh, so there's myself and 74 others all sharing our natural healing journeys from conditions, some of which doctors say we can't heal, 
that are lifelong and even life-threatening like cancer, multiple sclerosis, ALS, autoimmune, so many diseases, all been healed naturally. Um, so I'm very grateful for all the people that helped me to present my book out um, to the wider world. And it's now translated into Spanish, Dutch and French languages too, because not everybody speaks English. Um, and I feel it's, it's a way of us helping other people to see that we can heal ourselves, that we are so powerful, that our bodies are beautiful healing machines. Hmm. Where can people and, find your book? Thank you. It's, it's on Amazon. All four languages are on Amazon. And the English version is also in Barnes & Noble. Awesome. So head on over to either Amazon or Barnes & Noble if you want to check out Heal Yourself. It sounds very intriguing. So I might check that out myself. Uh, thank you again. And for those that are tuning in today, thank you as always for being here with us. If you like to contribute to connect, to cultivate this community that we are growing on YouTube, you can go ahead into the comments section and leave comments, questions, or reflections that are coming up for you as a result of this conversation that Sarah Dawkins and I got to have today. Until next time, everyone, much success to each of you. Thank you. Links related to this episode can be found in the show notes section. Want to submit questions about success, satisfaction, healing, and relationships, health, or work? You can do that free and anonymous at drtonywarner.com, where you'll find other resources there as well. Did you benefit from this episode? You can subscribe, like, and share with another to pass it on because anyone can listen on the go with this podcast audio available on all major podcasting platforms.